Welcome back to the lab. We want to welcome back Faisal Beg. He is the assistant professor at the School of Engineering Science at Simon Fraser University. Actually, there's a new, uh, this is exciting, um, School of Engineering Science, um, the new biomedical engineering program. Absolutely. Brand new program, cutting edge, state of art for the best of the best students. That's really neat. Yeah. We talked about this last time. You were here to talk about how MRIs work. That's right. This is a big field, this biomedical engineering, right? It's a huge field. It's up and coming. It's just starting. It has a lot of potential. Uh, think about it. Engineers have been designed all these cool gadgets around us. Right. Now, there's a huge potential to apply engineering technologies to you know, helping human body and helping human health. So there's a huge amount of potential to design uh, imaging ex equipment, imaging algorithms, photonics, uh, uh, rehabilitative and assistive devices. Uh, you name it. You know, there's a huge amount of things to be done in this field and lots of excitement because you are studying engineering and right. you're studying biology and the human body. I think of all, all the ways digital technology has changed medicine, yes. from cochlear implants. Uh, I mean, just it's amazing. Absolutely. Uh, what an interesting area to yes, be in. Yes, it's right a great now. area. Great now, area. last time you were here, you talked about how an MRI uh, works, magnetic yes. resonance imaging. It's That's a way right. of getting 3D That's x-rays, right. basically, exactly. right? Exactly. It's a way of getting 3D pictures of the internal human anatomy in the living human. So you and I, we can go and lie down in the scanner, listen to our favorite music, and out come beautiful pictures that show exactly what our brain looks like in 3D, our heart looks like, and how it beats in 3D, and so on. So today I want to take you a step further. Okay. Uh, once you get these images in 3D, mm -hmm. uh, there's still uh, a lot of improvement to be done in how we analyze these images. Right now, people look at them on the computer screen. Human radiologists will read them. That's right. And you know you have 2D flat panel displays right. to, to display these images, but the information is really 3D. So there's a lot of algorithms to be developed and are being developed that mm -hmm. will quantify the 3D information available in these images and present them better to the radiologist and to the doctors who are looking after you. And also, I imagine we want to do computer diagnostics exactly. as well. Let exactly. the computer do some of this work. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Because the human eye cannot, you know, diagnose and quantify the smallest subtle features. So computers can do it much better in mm. some sense. So let me show you some of the images. You know, here's this looks this like a brain. brain. This is a brain. You have three views of the brain, and you can use these three views to generate. 3D models of the human now brain. Now that looks 3D. I mean, yeah. it's still 2D, but it sims the 3D view. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's a full 3D model that you can, you know, rotate. And it's and colored too, which it's helps. It's colored too. Yeah. You can see different areas of the brain, different areas of in the internal anatomy. Uh, here is a heart, and you can see you can get a 3D picture of the beautiful heart. Wow. So you can stack up these 2D slices and make 3D models. Uh, here is a picture, a cross section of my thigh. And you can Your get thigh? Good, that's my thigh on the left over here. <laughs> and you can see wow. these yellow are the sciatic nerves. Now, and how do they get a cross section without slicing your thigh? That's the beauty of MRI and CT. You can actually get cross-sectional images of the inside of the body without slicing you up. It takes enough pictures that it can, it can uh, essentially figure out what it looks like to be exactly, a cross-section. Exactly. It will stack them up and make 3D models out wow. of 2D pictures. Oh, that's amazing. Um, so, you know, here we have, you know, a normal brain on the left-hand side. Okay. And here we have an Alzheimer's brain on the right-hand side. And there's lots of things that are happening in this, in this pathology, in this disease, which we would like to quantify and detect this disease early in advance. So you can actually see on the lower panel um, a, a normal aging brain, a brain with mild cognitive impairment, and a brain with Alzheimer's disease. Look how big the ventricles are. Look how big, um, you know, how big these cell, extracellular spaces are. Yeah. So what I'm going to talk to you today about is how to quantify anatomical shape. How to put a ruler or a metric and measure is this shape close to normal or is the shape far away from normal? This is the kind of thing it could, you have to know for a computer analysis. Exactly. It has to quantify everything. Exactly, to quantify everything. So the, Humans can use an intuition, not a that's computer. Right, that's right. Yeah. We can quantify. We, we can I mean, make, I look at the brain, I say, oh, it's right. obviously yeah, looks right. different. The radiologists do it all the time. They right. look at a brain and say, yeah, you're close to it. normal. Right. Or you're far away from normal, mm -hmm. so you may be having a disease. But how do you make the computer do this? You quantify it. Exactly. Yeah. So DRC Thompson in 1917 came up with this idea that if you can take two objects, you may not be able to describe each one separately, but if you can deform one to make it look like the other, that the deformation that you get quantifies how close or how far you are. So that's a mathematical formula of exactly. how it's been deformed. Exactly. And then we can describe that difference as a formula. Exactly. So if you look at this image over here, here are two brain images. And what we'd like to do is find corresponding points, right. like this point over here goes over here and so on. Then this correspondence gives you a, a motion of every point. Here's how it changed. So if you were to sit on these points, every point will mm -hmm. move a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so here is shown the motion of each point. With vectors. With so vectors. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, you know, instead of one point, now you have motion of all the points taken together. 
and this quantifies the difference of shape between the two brains. A human can intuit it and sense it. That's right. But but it's much harder for us to say, well, this, 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 this. And That's the, right. The computer needs that. That's kind right. Of exactly. And we can come up with a number eventually that says, okay, this is the vector field. This is the transformation. And this is. And we can quantify wow. that and say, this is the number. This is how far you are from that. For example, if you are compare this and this shape then we can get a sequence of shapes in the middle as that deform this template shape slowly to make it look like the target because wow. each point is moving you know slowly to but get a to single it. number can represent that a single number will represent and that gives you a good diagnostic well that has to be shown but we are right. on the path to building these tools that will allow right. the computer to quantify anatomical shape which right. as humans we do great job at intuitively right. qualifying what right. it is. Right. So I'm showing what you a challenge. This is almost artificial intelligence, isn't it's it? It's exactly very much like yeah. artificial intelligence. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, building artificial algorithms. Yeah. Uh, so we have uh, these algorithms that can quantify close and far. Let me show you one more uh, problem that we are looking at. So here is the application. For example, we see that this metric distance, this number that quantifies the distance between two shapes is increasing much faster in people who have Alzheimer's than, ah. than people with normal aging. So you could so, say that here, there may, now we don't know, but yes. there may be a diagnostic there. Exactly. If you could quantify that. Exactly. Yeah. So we are in the process of validating this and applying it to actual diseases in the human body. That's the kind of stuff the numbers can start to show. Exactly. And bring up. Yeah. And be very precise and quantify right. you know, how far you are in the disease whether drugs are helping you, whether they are not helping you. How do docs react to this? I mean, I imagine some doctors say, well, no, no, it's an art, not a science. It takes intuition. Uh, well, or do is, some of them say, no, this makes sense. Let's quantify it. Well, this is really cutting edge state of art, so it's very much in the research area right, right. now. We are not yet at the <laughs> clinical stage, so I think that will be... You haven't had to talk to the doctors yet. <laughs> but I think the doctors see promise in this. This is the future. There's a lot of promise in and this. And it's not going to put them out of business. It's going to give them more information Absolutely. that can be useful to them. This is actually presenting them the 3D information in a much more easy... A and digestible form. Yeah. Exactly. You give me a number, I can exactly. say, oh, well, I can see on this That's scale right. that number's right. a problem. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this is another problem I'm going to describe here of the millions of problems that exist in medical image analysis right now is how do you average... Three, three brains, or how huh. do you average three hearts, compute an average heart. If you just take them and add them up, like we do numbers, right. you get something that doesn't look it, like the heart it at doesn't all. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. <laughs> that's right. heart. That's so something else. It. That's right. <laughs> Too many valves. That's right. So, you know, the idea that we came up with, uh, this is the work with my advisor, who's a Johns Hopkins, Miller, Eunice Truve, is you take the template heart and you look at the motion of these points so that they will make the template deform look like the target. Interesting. So then the, the motion of those points codes for the target shape. Right. So then it's like being on a golf course, you are here yep. and you would like to hit the ball and make to and make it go to the hole over there. Right. Then the initial velocity with which you send the ball codes for the entire path. Right. So so that's that's a complicated calculation. Yes, but. exactly. So there's a big equation there that I'm not going to describe, but that's essentially the idea. Right. You take the template, you deform it, right. the process of deformation and we tells you where it goes. Quantify the deformation. Exactly. So now these know. vectors you can add and subtract because vectors are like right. numbers. They're numbers. They're, yeah. You can add and subtract. So you can take a template heart and you can deform it, find the initial vectors to a bunch of these hearts, right. and you can compute the average vector. Of the vector, now we can do an average that's right. and create a true average Heart. That's right. And you would do that for a lot of reasons, for statistical purposes and so forth. Exactly. Studies and exactly. Analysis. So the first statistical thing, simplest statistical thing you have is the average. Right. What is the average of a population? Right. And then you can compute things like standard deviation, how things change around in normal very and disease. So that's exactly what this thing is doing. So if you have a very new biomedical engineering program at SFU that is, uh, has strengths in biomedical imaging, uh, in photonics, if you, somebody wants to study lasers, somebody Me. wants to study um, how to image things using lasers uh, and treat different diseases with lasers, rehabilitation and assistive devices, wireless devices, you know, a lot of the technologies coming out are transferring data wirelessly from the person to the physician in real time. It's amazing, so, isn't it? And computers are churning out these numbers and diagnosing whether this person is actually wow. uh, having a disease or an episode that can be treated right away, detected if, right away. If you want to have a hand in this changing, exciting field, that's right. Simon Fraser University School of Engineering Science sounds like a great place to exactly. be, especially that new biomedical engineering program. Absolutely. Wow. It's really exciting stuff, really exciting times, and it's a call to the best and the brightest students to come over and join the group. Help change the world. Help change the world. Faisal, it's great to talk to you once again. Thanks Thank for you. coming by. He's a professor at the School of Engineering Science at Simon Fraser University and is looking for a few bright high school students who want to get into biomedical Only engineering. Only the best of the brightest. Got to be smart. Yes. But if that intrigued you, I, I mean, I'm sure it did. That's something you might want to find out about. Thank you so much.